Hello and welcome to another edition of our Sunday meditation moment. So sit back and relax for another few minutes. We're going to talk about what it means, memento mori, to remember death. Thank you for joining us at Swords of St. Michael. Hello, I'm your host, Farrah Rose Perry, Sister Farrah Rose Perry, Tertiary Professor Franciscan, and I have been offering tidbits of, uh, shall we say, experience, a little bit of wisdom, and continuous exploration into uh, this, the preternatural, supernatural, and other effects of the Office of Exorcism, as well as some ghostology here on the channel at Swords of St. Michael. We offer all sorts of AIDS helps at the website, swords at St. Michael org. If you need some prayers or anything else, today's meditation moment revolves around the latest headlines. As I'm sure everyone who is here and watching is already aware of, in the United States of America, we have a former president that was preparing a rally to rally his followers to vote for him to have faith in what he was doing as a politician or a leader and six minutes into that speech shots rang out I will not name the shooter because as any of you that have followed any of my videos we do not use demon names here we do not give evil another podium to be recognized or applauded before I get into Memento Mori, what I want to do is I want to offer a sincere note of prayer for the 50-year-old former firefighter, Corey Comparatore. He took it upon himself, sitting right behind this politician, Donald Trump, former president, to throw himself on his wife and his daughter thereby sacrificing his own life. This very well could have been the former 45th president. However, an act of ultimate sacrifice, this man chose his family over himself. Corey. There have been numerous uh, GoFundMe set up for him and the other victims, a state police officer, David Dutch, 57, and another one, another person that was, I think they're both in critical condition, please don't quote me if I'm wrong, I'm only offering prayers, and contemplating the gift that they gave us by sacrificing themselves so that more people were not hurt. James uh, Copenhagen or Copenhauser, 74 years old, also was injured. So we have three people that were bystanders at a public event. Dead, gone but not forgotten. In that moment that these people heard those shots rang out, they did. And they stood where they were. We have a moment now in history, and for those of you that are under 20 and don't remember um, any other presidential assass attempts at assassination or other um, political um, attempts at assassination, it's pretty horrendous, and it really rocks the core of our being to look at our world in a different way and see how people are thinking on one hand, we have people that are posting on social media, why did you miss? I would have shot him. He'd be dead. And then there's other people calling him the second coming of Christ, saying, oh, God's got his hand on him because nothing touched him, nothing hit him. And at that 611, there are people quoting, put on the whole armor of God. It's a beautiful thing. It's an ugly thing. For those who have faith, there needs no explanation. For people that do not have faith, I'm not sure if I can explain this to you. Yes, I believe it was an act of God that he is not dead. Do I, do I tell you, these are horrible people. This kid 
And I call him a kid. He was 20 years old. How many people remember 20 years old? Mm, you don't really have a lot of, shall we say, cans in the six pack revolving at the same time. There's just, when you're 20 years old, you're full of hormones and you're full of all kinds of ideas. So if I ask anybody for prayer, it's not just for the survivors of the families of the victims. I want to ask prayer for this 20 year old kid who was shot potentially dim cap, diminished capacity, potentially a loner, potentially traumatized, potentially from my point of view, I haven't watched regular television in probably 17, 18 years now because the opportunities that I have had at a hotel, you see the same programming over and over. Was this child a victim? And I say child, he was over the age of majority. He was an adult, very responsible for his actions as a mother, as a mother. I can't imagine what those parents are going through. And everybody can point fingers and say, oh, they make over six figures. They live in a great area. This should have never happened. We don't know what those parents are going through unless it happens to one of our children that makes that kind of choice. This is not something that we are called to judge rashly and point fingers and think there by the grace of God go us. No, this is some, this is an opportunity for all of us to come together and look in our hearts. Momento Mori. Why does the mother of that 20 year old man that pulled the trigger on the 45th president not deserve prayers anymore? than the hero that saved his family, 50-year-old Corey Compatitore. Why does he not? Everybody says, oh, he's a monster. He's evil. All right. If you are a baptized Christian of faith, you know that by the divine deposit of the Holy Spirit in you at your baptism, you have that Holy Spirit in you. We were born a part of God. So if that's the case, Somewhere in that 20-year-old, he had to know what he was doing was wrong. But he did it anyway. Does that mean he's evil? He made an evil choice. Do we know what his thoughts were? Do we know another man's heart? The Bible tells us, no, we don't. We are not to know another man's heart. Only God. So on that note, as we talk about memento mori, let's offer a little prayer for that 20 year old's parents, they're gonna have to live with this the rest of their life. An assassination attempt on a president, former president. And the family, Corey's wife, Corey's daughter. I've chosen to really back off on social media, Facebook, Instagram, X, because I felt that there were certain parts of the programming that I saw growing up, the same thing is happening on Facebook, on Instagram, on X. Everything we look at and attempt to consume and tell ourselves, oh, this is good. This is wonderful. This is prayer. Oh, I'm feeling so much better about myself. I'm learning so much. There are beautiful aspects. But lurking behind these aspects, we have little tidbits of evil poking in, showing us things that we may not need to look at it, whether it's alcohol or pornography, or maybe something that we want to buy. You're going to see that in all forms of media as AI has overcome. What we think we can choose not to look at is creeping through and waiting. So watch it. Memento Mori in uh, the Franciscans which I am a professed tertiary, which means a lay Franciscan. I do not live behind walls and wear a habit. I am asked to be in the world, but not of it. Momento Mori is a practice that we do once a year, or actually we do it once a month or however often we can as Franciscans. And we go through our lives. We go through our notebooks of what do we need to do? Do we need to fill out a will? Do we need to phone somebody that's offended us do we what is it that we need to do to clear out our lives and make our lives much simpler when we look at our lives as a whole 
Are we ready that very moment? Right now, right now. If you looked at any part of your day today or yesterday in the grocery store, at work, maybe at a soccer match, maybe at a rock concert, maybe at, um, who knows? Maybe you went on a retreat. At any moment, momento mori, we will die. In that moment, at any time, are we ready? That, that is the thought that momento mori calls us to reflect upon any moment in our day. Now, of course, there are bracelets you can buy. There are pens. There's all sorts of things you can buy so that maybe once a week, once a month, in your spiritual faith, in your walk, take five minutes, take 15 minutes, take an hour. And if your thoughts are increasingly worried about what you need to get done, what has to be done, what who's needing you, the phone is ringing, the texts are going, you've got to answer Facebook posts, maybe step back, step back from everything and look at what you have, all the beauty and blessings and everything around you. Let's not take these moments for granted. Let's take the time to think, what could I do a little bit better? So three things, top three things, and I'm going to let you go because I want you to have that meditative time today, tonight, after dinner, or maybe right now, if you can go take a walk and get away from everything. Three things. Number one, let's think about who, what, when, what have we left undone? Who have we left unloved? Who have we not forgiven? Can we look in the mirror and say, I've forgiven myself. I made a really bad choice. God's already forgiven me. Christ has forgiven me. I have no right to continue to beat myself up over that. Have you forgiven yourself? Two, if, and this is a big if, Let's just say the world was to end right now. You're watching the video. Boom. Lights out. We're gone. Maybe you're in your car listening to this. What if another car hits you? Like I got hit a couple of years ago. Lights out. I'm holding on to my steering wheel. I'm like, okay, God, Jesus, come get me. Take me. I love you. What is going to be your last thought? What, what are you going to regret? A hug? A kiss, a meal. They say that even the wealthiest people in the world, when they're on their deathbed, time is the only thing they wish for. So if you have the time today, if you have the time to make a difference in your life, in another people's life by memento mori, remembering we all must die, what can you do right now? No fears. No worries, no shame, humility. What can I do today to reconcile, to apologize? It, and you don't have to tell people you're doing it. If you're going to go leave a cake for your neighbor because they chopped down your tree last year and you gave them bloody heck, go give them a cake and say, I'm sorry whatever these little things that you come up with in your mind, I guarantee you they're inspired. Go do it. And three, finally, when you think about whether you're 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, I'm going to die. I'm going to go. Do I have a will? Is my family covered? I'm telling you right now, in the last month, there have been so many people around me dying without a will. If your loved ones are not on your checking accounts, they will not be able to get them. They will have to go to court. If you don't write something down on paper and mail it to yourself and put it in a safe or put it in a post office box, your loved ones won't be taken care of. Do your loved ones even know what you want done? Do you have a living will? Do you have a specific place you want to be buried? Do you have specific um, anything? Possessions. Do you have things that you want to go to certain people in your life? 
I have some beautiful, beautiful relics and things I need to make sure go to specific monasteries, convents, or churches. I need to put that in writing because I'm 61 right now and I need to get my act together. So this show isn't just for you, it's for me too. It's a reminder that we all, we all have things we could be doing. We all have things that we want to do and we all have things that other people depend on us for. We all must die. I leave you on that note. In nomine Patria et Filio et Spiritus Sanctus Sigurat in principio et nunc et semper et secula seculorum. God bless you. God keep you. Until next week, Sunday Meditation Minute, Fair Rose, Swords of St. Michael. Give us a like, a shout, put the subscribe bell on, and if you can, follow us for more. God bless and good night.